Don't tell me I'm not up with modern times. I like my techno. If I rock my head that way anymore, you're going to think that I'm in a Saturday Night Live skit, you know. Baby, don't hurt me no more. Well, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm going to give you information. I'm Marky Bilson, Tri-City Sports Now, 1420 WEMB Sports Radio, and JetBroadcasting.Live. Plus, you might be watching me on Facebook Live on the most followed Facebook page of any sports radio station in the market. More than 1,600 now. Okay, we're far beyond WFAN. I'll give you that. Okay, but, you know... They're a little bit bigger up there, too. Yet, the Tri-Cities has more professional baseball franchises than New York City. They got four. I mean, Mets and Yankees, but also Brooklyn Cyclones and Staten Island Yankees. We got five. We have a little oversaturation. Anyway, uh, Hall of Fame. Pro. I love the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And, you know, I talked about that. I love the legends. I love, you know. And you know what else I love? I have Rick Goslin on here from time to time. By the way, in the next hour, we're going to be talking to Jerry Bonkowski. He is of NBCSports.com. We're going to talk a little bit about the race at Watkins Glen. And then at 130 Southern Conference information, you, me, and SoCon John Hooper. You know, there was a basketball coach who got a 15-year show cause penalty out of the SoCon. Talk a little bit about that. Plus, you know, how the football season's going to wind up. You know who's actually doing a very good job in NFL training camps for the SOCON? Yeah. Devlin Hodges. Up there in Pittsburgh. Now, making a team is a different story, but he's turned some heads. And you know what? You know, I, you know what turned heads with the main Pro Football Hall of Fame when we had Rick Goslin on? As I said before. Rick Goslin has the senior committee of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And for years and years, there was this, why isn't Jerry Kramer in? Well, Jerry Kramer got in. And that was what? Back in 2018. It was, you know, why, why was it taking so long for Jerry Kramer to get in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Seems like it should have happened, you know, a generation ago. Well, he finally got in. So then who is next? Who is Canton's, lack of a better term, Gil Hodges? The guy they say, why isn't that guy in? And I asked Rick Goslin, who heads the senior committee, okay, I mean, you know, it would seem to me that the guy who hasn't been in, Jim Marshall, 20 years the Vikings, I mean, I think of the Purple Gang, and even before Alan Page, I think of Jim Marshall. So you know what, Marshall only made the Pro Bowl two years and all that. Johnny Robinson, old defensive back, Kansas City Chiefs. When he won Super Bowl IV, he had a pick in the fourth quarter to help seal that 23-7 victory. But, yeah, I mean, before Patrick Mahomes, I guess, except for Joe Montana, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah, what, they haven't been back to the Super Bowl since 1970, 1969 season. Talking about how long it's been for the Cleveland Browns, my goodness. And Johnny Robinson's name, you know, that doesn't come up as much as, you know, I don't know, some other defensive backs, be it from the old days, Night Train Lane, or from a more contemporary era, say, Deion Sanders. Even that's been now a little bit longer. But anyway, guess who made the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and you heard about it first here? Johnny Robinson. And you know what? He told everybody yesterday, or not yesterday, but two days ago, Boy, I thought I had been forgotten. It's been 47 years since I last played professional football. After all this time, I thought I had been forgotten. I can't tell you how pleased. Well, yes, we can understand how pleased Johnny Robinson would be to make the Pro Football Hall of Fame after 47 years away. And just a little bit more from, you know, a living legend right there. Uh, I mentioned, you know, maybe, maybe the Chiefs haven't won a lot, but old AFL days, that was the team to play for. I was blessed to play with a great franchise and with great players during my career. Kansas City owner Lamar Hunt and head coach Hank Stram 
were wonderful, very supportive, and they both showed great faith in me. I wouldn't have wanted to play with any other team but the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a nice thing to say, isn't it? That's real nice. You know, I remember when Ty Law was at the University of Michigan and he made the Pro Football Hall of Fame. When Ty Law was at the University of Michigan, uh, I'm a big fan of football contests in the paper. You don't see them much anymore. But I remember the Beaver County Times. No, it's not a local paper. It's from Western PA. Ty Law is from Beaver County, PA. Same as Mike Ditka. Same as Tony Dorsett. Okay? Same as Joe Namath. So it's from a legendary area for producing pro football players. And Law, when he was at Michigan, he would actually make picks in a pro in a football contest, Beaver County Times, you know, sort of like beat Beaver County Times. You know how that goes, beat the celebrity picking panel and all that. That I thought was pretty cool, showing her roots and all that. Of course, then Ty Law ever said, you know what, I may be from Beaver County, he never was a Steelers fan. Which was like, what, 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 when that came out. But then again, he didn't go to Pitt or Penn State. He went to Michigan, too. So, hey, you know, anyway. But one of the things about the New England Patriots, they say about this dynasty, is that unlike some others, say the Packers, say the old Steelers, the number of Hall of Famers probably isn't going to be that great as compared to some other dynasties. Ty Law, though, is one, and Ty Law doesn't think that that is true. I grew up in Alacoopa, Pennsylvania. 25 minutes right outside of Pittsburgh. Population about 9,000 people, and we produce athletes. We produce Hall of Famers. Alacoopa may have more than the New England Patriots. Think about that. <laughs> El Quipa is actually run down. I, you know, I've been there, you know. You got old bars, and they you know, haven't had anything in there for 40 years, you can say. It still says, let's go Quips on top of it, and all that stuff. Anyway, but yeah, so they produce Hall of Famers. I told you El Quipa was good. 50 years ago, the top two counties for producing college football players, or say like D1 college football players, one was Jefferson County, Ohio, with 4.05. That's uh, where Steubenville Big Red is. And I've told the story many times about how uh, Steubenville Big Red actually has led to the name of Big Orange Country for Tennessee. Has to do with Ray Mears. I'll tell the story some other time. We're going through Pro Football Hall of Famers, if you haven't heard that. But yes, that's where Big Orange Country comes from, the Steubenville Big Red, okay, in Jefferson County, Ohio. Uh, number two, and it used to be, I mean, now Florida just kicks everybody's ass, but uh, it was uh, 50 years ago, 3.95 college football players a year came from Beaver County, like I said. All right, so there you go. You want to know where the football players are? There you are. Okay, yeah. Uh, Bert Ratchachar passed away with Tennessee Volunteers. No, he was not from there. He was from Washington County. Okay, so you got that. Ed Reed, boy, Ed Reed turned a lot of heads with, first of all, he dressed stylishly in his own style and all that. Had his hair going every which way. I kind of like that. He also wore to the Hall of Fame game a Trevon Martin t-shirt, getting people to think, hmm, his right to do so. Anyway, but remember when Terry Bradshaw once said when he was inducted, what I wouldn't give to put my hands under Mike Webster's butt one more time? Ed Reed would like one more interception. I loved it all, especially when I heard that Reed in M&T Bank Stadium. What I wouldn't give for one more interception. So similarity right there, you know. And so that was Ed Reed from Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now, the Titans had a, it was basically, I think most people think of Kevin Mawe with the Jets, but he did play from 2006 to 2009 with the Tennessee Titans. And he's happy. You know, Hawaii is, produced, is a good football state. I'm surprised to hear this. He's the first Hawaiian in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I am Hawaiian. And I'm humbled to be the first Kanaka Maoli to represent the people of Hawaii and the first Hawaiian to enter into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Hey, 
you know, St. Louis High School, Honolulu, you see them, it seems, more times than not in the top 25 high school football rankings. For Maui, yeah, this is a dream come true, but what's his biggest regret in the NFL? My biggest regret is that our brother John never got a chance to see me play in the NFL and celebrate this night with us today. But I believe God has a special place in this skybox. He's looking down on us right now. John is not here, but he's never forgotten, and we love you. I love the comment. Family so often comes into play when in these Hall of Fame speeches. I still remember Jared Payton, himself a future Tennessee Titan, the age of 12, enshrining his father, Walter, and saying, everyone you meet is a role model. You just have to take the good and the bad from everyone. And it was a powerful message and a great speech uh, that Walter Payton gave, uh, presented by his son, Jared. And I, I, lo I loved it. I was there at the time. And uh, just memorize, you know, how true everyone you meet is a role model. Take the good and the bad from everyone. I, it meant a lot to me. Champ Bailey, <laughs> there's a, he was in all too. I believe if we start listening, there's no telling the progress we can make. All of us are dads, sons, brothers, your friends. <sighs> We all understand that if we can't get our friends to listen, then no one will. Again, a lot of times powerful statements being made and all this. Uh, I can also also remember one time, uh, who, who was it? It was, uh, it was when Lester Hayes had his agent enshrine him. And that almost got booze from the crowd in camp. Nobody's born Tony Gonzalez on his day, and he wants to talk. You know, I, I mentioned family is such a big part of these Hall of Fame speeches. Tony Gonzalez with a little bit of a drawn-out hi, Mom. Mom, I love you. You're the strongest person I know. Seriously, you're the strongest person I know. Uh, you're always in a good mood. You're always happy. You're always so positive, no matter what. And you tell it like it is, and you're honest. It's the most important thing. It's radical honesty with you. You don't sugarcoat it. And I love you for that. And I think we all love you for that. Lots of people really like Tony Gonzalez. Uh, what, you know, he talks a little bit about uh, changing his routine, how he got to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. All right. All you youngsters listening at home, there's a cliche, here you go. So I changed my whole routine. Before I'd go to practice, I'd catch maybe 20, 30 balls of practice. Believe it or not, that's all receivers usually catch. But now I said, I'm going to take a page out of Will Shields' book. I'm going to, while the defense is going, I'm going to catch balls. And I would catch 10, 15, 20 balls while the defense was going. Before practice, I'd go out early. I'd catch 100 balls. Before practice even start, I'd get ready and go out early. I never did this before. You know something, there's something to be said for that. Now, Tony Gonzalez made a Hall of Fame that way, but I remember uh, I used to cover the Pitt Panthers, and at the time they had a ball player by the name of Yogi Roth. That, that name might be familiar because he's become an assistant coach at Southern California and also, I believe, is a sportscaster out there on the coast now. Uh, but also, if you're an old ETSU fan, you may remember uh, when ETSU opened up Heinz Field back in 2001. Actually, the Steelers had played a, a preseason game there before, and there had been, I think, an in-sync concert. It was the first college football game, though, at Heinz Field. It was ETSU and Pitt. ETSU lost 31 to nothing. And there was a guy named Yogi Roth. It was a, he was a uh, walk-on player at the game of his life. And I used to go, and yet, yeah, you want to talk about a guy, you say, give me more balls in the jugs. Give me more balls in the jugs. He might have gotten into, well, he didn't get into many games in a year. Let me just put it that way. But he wanted to be sure that when he was in, he was going to do a good job. And he certainly, I mean, he had the game of his life, like I said, against ETSU. Which, I guess, come to think of it, FBS versus FCS, you know, how, you know, I guess how, anyway... But that's what I, I mean. He had a significant game in college football, 
in a significant game in college football history, first game that his program would play at the new stadium, he was a leading factor. And boy, there was a guy who, like I said, catching balls, more balls than normal. Hey, I want to have that jugs gun. Hey, let me work out. Let me do this. For Roth, it gave him a career and a moment in the sun for Gonzalez. Immortality. I'm Marky Bilson. Let me give you some baseball news when we return. And a uh, no-hitter, a pitcher taken out after six innings. I still hate that. But first, this word from Asian House. Marky Bilson for Asian House, home of the Happy Box Meal, featuring plentiful appetizers and rice around your choice of 20 mouth-watering Chinese dishes. Or try their Japanese fare, sushi, sashimi, and the grill. I had my birthday dinner at Asian House and was most satisfied. Find the great menu and deals at GoAsianHouse.com. Use Tom for catering. You'll be most satisfied, too. Asian House, nestled in the shops on West Market, on the way to Jonesboro. Mention 1420 WEMB Sports Radio and get 10% off. Follow the adventures of Shrek, Donkey, Princess Fiona, Lord Farquaad, and every fairy tale adventure you know and love in Shrek the Musical at Barter Theater. This family friendly story is based.